I'm Ron Kay, Associate Professor of Entomology for the University of Florida. We're here in Alachua County near Orange Heights to learn about integrated pest management in blueberries. I'm here with Brandon Douglas of the Florida Blue Farms. And Brandon, how long have you been in the blueberry industry business and how many acres do you have here on the farm? This will be our third year in production this upcoming year to 2013 spring. Um, we have 50 acres currently. Uh, we have the potential to go up to about 140 acres, which we plan to do over the next couple of years. Mm -hmm. And you have many different varieties out here, correct? We do. We have several different varieties. Um, I think there's about seven spring high, uh, emerald, sweet crisp, rebel, uh, prima donna, star, very common varieties to Florida. What pests and diseases are you looking out for? What are your biggest concerns? Our biggest concern at this time is probably SWD, which is the spotted wing Drosophila, which shows up in the spring and uh, can lay its eggs in the fruit, which is a big problem once it gets to the packing facility because you can lose a lot of fruit. They will reject it if they find it mm -hmm. in the fruit. So that's one of the big problems we're facing now. We always face Botrysphaeria, uh, Phytophthora, which is a root rot, um, leaf spots, rust, Septoria, um, anthracnose, things of that nature. Mm -hmm. And what resources do you use to get information, get an identification of things that you find out here that you're, you've never seen before, that you're not familiar with? We use the UF Extension Office and we also use the Department of Ag Division of Plant Industry in Gainesville, which is very helpful. You take them a sample, drop it off, leave it with them, and usually they'll let you know something within a couple of days about what the disease is. No, very good. And uh, so they're very helpful. We also hire a uh, consultant that comes out and helps us too, also. Uh -huh. how, well, how do you go about scouting for these pests? We walk the field. That's the best way to do it, is to get out and look at your plants, see what's going on with them, walk through the fields, and see what's going on with them. Some of the, the insects that we have out here, like thrips, um, SWD, you can set out traps for, and we do that. SWD, you set out the traps around the south side of the farm mm -hmm. and check them a couple times a week and go from there. All right, and what do you do to control the pests and diseases out here? What tactics do you use? We use chemical spray as our main tactic against the diseases we have out here. SWD, we spray uh, by airplane and air blast sprayer. Um, about every seven to 10 days. We prefer to do it with the airplane because it's during our harvest season and it's, it's more, it's helpful, it's quicker. Usually they can get the whole farm spray within a day. So mm -hmm. that's very helpful to us. To work. That way we can get back to harvesting our fruit. Mm -hmm. Are those methods, are those chemical sprays always effective? And what are the general costs per acre of, of an application? I would say they're, they're normally pretty effective. Um, I think Mustang Max runs about $5 per acre for the chemicals and then if you spray it by airplane it's about $10 per acre um, each application and you know if you do that four or five times it's it can be kind of pricey. Um, I, I think we probably spend $300 per acre per year on, on uh, our, pest our pest management program. That's a lot of money just to It is, it's a lot of pests. money. Yeah. Definitely. And how does IFAS, UF, IFAS with UF uh, work with you and to help solve your, your pest management problems? They're very helpful. They're always a phone call away. If, you know, if you have a problem, they're more than willing to come out to your farm to help you to try to decide what, what kind of problem you have and, and what's the best mode of action to, to take care of the problem. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can all, or you can take a sample to them, and, and they can get try to figure out what it is that way. Well, thanks, Brandon, and, and good luck. Next, we'll talk to a UF researcher who does work on IPM in blueberries. Research and extension are critical components of any IPM program. They're critical for providing new information to growers on battling their pests. I'm with Oscar Liburd, Professor of Entomology with the University of Florida in Gainesville. Oscar, how large is the blueberry production business in Florida? There are approximately 4,000 acres of blueberries in Florida. About 90% is southern high bush and about 10% is rabbit eye blueberries.
and what are the key strategies and tactics used in pest management in blueberries? There are a number of important strategies that's used in pest management. Um, most important one is monitoring. You need to know exactly what's in the field and the only way you can do that is by doing effective monitoring that is going to the field and looking to see exactly what's there. Uh -huh. And do you have an idea of what percentage of the blueberry growers in the United States actually use IPM methods? Um, I would say about 30 to 40 percent of the growers tend to use some aspects of um, IPM methods. Mm -hmm. And are there particular pests and diseases that blueberry growers, especially here in Florida, should be keeping a close watch out for? Yeah, there are a number of different pests. Um, flower thrips, which comes out in early spring. Um, blueberry bud mite, um, which, which also comes out in spring. Um, Spotted wing Drosophila is a new pest, and this one is a very um, dangerous and invasive species for, for growers. And also cranberry fruitworm to a lesser extent. You mentioned the spotted wing Drosophila in saying that it's an invasive pest. Where did it come from, and how long has it been here in Florida? Well, um, spotted wing Drosophila has been in the continental United States um, since 2008. It was first recorded in California, but we recorded it for the first time in Florida in 2009 in Hillsborough County. Uh, we did not find it in blueberries, but we found it on traps um, in Hillsborough County. Um, in 2010, we recorded it in about uh, five counties. Uh, in 2011, we recorded it in about seven counties. And in 2012, we had about nine counties with spotted wing Drosophila. Uh, most of these counties tend to grow blueberries. Uh -huh. So it's spreading throughout the state. It is. Yeah. And what, uh, what are the best means for providing or transferring new information from research to blueberry growers that they can use? Well, we tend to use a number of different strategies. Um, On-farm demonstration tends to work well, where we actually conduct experiments on the grower farm. We tend to use newsletter and um, we, uh, we also have a website, um, the Fruit and Entomology website, where the growers can access as well. And at grower meetings, every fall and spring, we have a blueberry grower meetings, and we tend to talk about our research at those meetings. And what significance do you see that IFAS uh, with UF has with the blueberry production industry here in Florida? Um, IFAS play a very integral role in terms of providing information to the growers. Um, all of the management programs we're using right now in blueberries actually was developed um, in my lab when it comes to insect pest management. For example, um, the trap we're using for thrips monitoring was developed um, in my program. Um, currently we're working with blueberry gall midge. We have a new trap as well that's developed in my program. And what we do, we demonstrate these, um, these new traps and tools to the growers at um, on-farm demonstration and also we talk about it at grow meetings. Well, thanks, Oscar, and keep up the great work. So you can see that research and extension are critical components to any successful IPM program. This has been another success story for IPM in Florida.